Are you wasting time in your business? What tasks could be made more efficient? How can you save time on those tasks? And is this going to be a difficult shift to make in your business? We're going to go through all of that in this video. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in. So let's start with, are you wasting time in your business? So before I set up the system that saves me 10 hours a week, I would have one place that I would do my planning. I would have a different, uh, well, I would have lots of different places that I would uh, implement um, the tasks that I had planned to do. <laughs> Um, and then I would maybe have task management uh, maybe in the same tool that I was planning, but not always, or I might just write them down a to-do list on a piece of paper. And then I'd also have different ways of uh, getting feedback. And to be quite honest, that was just a mess. Like customer feedback was all over the place. And then obviously you have your uh, metrics feedback as well, things like Google Analytics or social media content uh, marketing analytics. So it was a bit all over the place in terms of me being disorganized and wasting a lot of time looking for things um, and trying to remember where I had stored them. I didn't have a very good system for organizing my folders and such. So how are you wasting time? Um, this is just an example of how you could be wasting time. This might not be applicable to you, um, but it's just a good way of illustrating it. So I. I would substitute this for myself with a YouTube video, but let's take a blog post as an example. So let's say you are writing a blog post in order to educate at a certain stage of the buyer journey for one of your offers. So you um, need to be clear on what stage of the buyer journey you're wanting, what the purpose of this blog post is and what stage of the buyer journey that kind of piece of content is for. So you need to have a kind of maybe refresher of your offer if you're if you have lots of offers. Uh, then you might decide to plan the blog post in a Google Doc. You might jump back and forth with ChatGPT to help you outline the blog post. Uh, you would give ChatGPT probably some information about your offer or the angle that you want this blog post to have. And then you might jump into ChatGPT again at the end to help you edit and make sure there is no grammatical errors or just to um, polish up the grammar. And then you might at some point along the journey, not necessarily at the end, add that into your content calendar. So you're jumping between a lot of different softwares. So each time you switch between software, that can actually take a lot of time for you to get refocused again. And according to research, the minimum time that can take is nine minutes. So each time you jump between looking at your offer, jumping into Google Docs to start writing your offer, leaving Google Docs and going into ChatGPT, each time you move from one software to another, that can take nine minutes for you to refocus. So how can you save more time? So let's take the same tasks as our example. If we have them all in the one piece of software, so we store all the information about our offer in there, we plan our post in there, we actually write it in there, we schedule it in a content calendar in there, and we have AI capabilities in there, then we're not wasting all that time jumping from software to software. And it also helps keep us organized because everything is in the one place. So let's uh, use this nine minutes uh, as a guide. If you switch between different softwares just 14 times in a day, and I reckon you probably do it more than that uh, based on my own habits, then that's 126 minutes that you're wasting just trying to refocus and get in the flow again. You might think you're being efficient uh, and not taking nine minutes, but are you focused as intently as you could be? So how easy or hard could this be for you? Is it going to be a hard switch to make to try and save yourself a, at least 10 hours a week? So I set up a system to avoid context switching using Notion and Notion AI, and I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at it just now to see how you could use Notion to make your life easier as well. Um, so this is where I manage my entire business basically within Notion. So let me just give you a quick look around and explain how this saves me so much time. So um, the first thing is it makes 
it easy for me to find everything because everything's all interlinked. And the second thing is I don't have to move from uh, software to software because most things I'm doing are within Notion, um, apart from if I'm actually going to say film a video or something like that. So let's have a look here. So at the top you can see my task manager and I can see today's tasks here. And that's just a separate page with a different setup if I want to go into detail in my task manager. Here I've got some foundational tools which I don't really use now but I used them when getting set up. They were to help me with my positioning and my brand strategy. And then I have Factory, um, which is where I plan all of my offers, all of my products, um, and I also put any ideas I have in there as well so I don't lose them. Um, and we'll go into that one in a bit more detail in a minute because it demonstrates well how, this, how Notion can help save you time, especially when you combine it with Notion AI. Um, this is just a different view of my uh, product uh, database which just showcases all the products I have launched so that I can see them all in one place. These are just some tools I'm playing around with, we'll skip those for this. Um, and then we have my fuel section, so this is where how I get more visible and more people to know about my offers and products and services. So I've got my sales campaign planner which is basically this calendar, I've got a couple more views below. Then I have a long form content hub which is for things like uh, blog, podcast or YouTube videos and then I have a short form content hub which is for more social media type posts. I then have a collaboration hub so that I can get in front of other people's audiences. So this is where I can track any collaborations I've applied to be a part of or I've been accepted to be a part of. It's also where I can plan out pitching, say I wanted to be uh, pitched to be on a podcast or something. And then I have an email marketing hub where I can manage all of my the emails that I'm sending to my list. And then these parts don't really have any AI involved but they're still useful to have all in the same place and that's a, a place for me to track my finances so I can make decisions based on what's selling well, where I can track all my metrics and where I can track all customer feedback that I receive. So if we go back into the product planner, because this is the best illustration of how this all works. So as you can see, this, these are all just different views of the same database. This is why I love Notion so much. So we've got an empty view where I can just input new ideas. So this is at the top so that um, if I am in bed and I come up with an idea and I want to get to sleep, I can just pick up my phone, pop the idea in here by clicking new from my phone and it's in there and I can look at it some other time and decide if it was a good idea or not. Then I can see all my launched products here by gallery view so I can see a little image of my products. And then down here I have uh, like a Kanban style view so I can see the status of my products. So I've got quite a few ideas here as you can see and then I've got launched products as well. I've got nothing that's currently in creation. So I'm going to use one of these as an example to show you how this helps you to stay organised um, and not spend a lot of time looking for things, but also how um, Notion AI can be combined in with databases to make it really powerful. So I'm going to use this product as an example. It's called Teach Outside the Box and it's just a couple of Notion templates to host courses on, to test out course ideas. So if we scroll down, I've just input information about the product. So I've put who it's for, what's included, what problem it solves, why me? So that is essentially my positioning and then also how the customer accesses the product. I actually went back and filled this in a bit later. This wouldn't be something you'd necessarily know when you're just kind of fleshing out the idea of an offer. Then I've got the product format. So in this case it's a digital product which means it's a one-off payment. So one payment per year and I've got a proposed selling price here of $11. And uh, but you don't need to fill this in initially and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. In fact, I'm going to empty this for a minute, even though it's launched, I'll fill it back in later to show you what I mean. Then uh, some of this uh, will be worked out for you. These are just to do some simple calculations to see how profitable an offer is and if it's worth your time. Um, and then we have some other sections here uh, that you can actually fill in at a template level to save you time because things like your brand personality and brand values aren't going to change between products because it's at a brand level. So you can fill those in in a template and they will show up then automatically in all your entries. I'm not going to go into how you do that in this video otherwise we'll be here for about five hours. <laughs> 
Okay, so I've just filled those in. So we have my brand personality and brand values, which I uh, figured out using my foundational tools and uh, how I sign off emails. This is one thing I love about Notion, which will save you so much time. So what I've done here is I have linked my product database to my testimonials database, which means when I get testimonials in, I can input them into my testimonials database, which is where my customer feedback is. And I can select from the list anything that's related to this product. So I've got them in a separate database, which is where all my feedback is stored. But then anytime I get feedback for this specific product, I can input it directly in here. And the two databases are linked so I can find all my feedback or testimonials quickly in one place. And you can do that with lots of databases and you can link them all up to your product so you can find information easily. You could do it with uh, copy or graphics, although I tend to develop mine down here. But there are lots of different ways that you can work that to suit you. Uh, then I've got a place to add any graphics, links to my sales copy or my sales page and links to marketing. But I create a lot of that down here. So what I've done here is because in Notion you can take, when you have a database, you can create a template. So if I go back to my database, I'll go to this view because it's easier. Go to this view because it's easier. If I scroll along here, oh my head is in my way, and click this drop down, you can see I've got this template here, which is my default. And this is how I use Notion prompts to make my life so much easier. So they're all already plugged into this template and this is my default template. So it shows up in every new entry. So if I go in, back in here to this product, go full page and scroll down, so these are essentially different parts of the product uh, flow from coming up with the idea through to requesting feedback from customers. So I've got messaging, which comes up with pain points and desired results. Uh, pricing, they've got a few different ways to come up with pricing based on what I'm wanting to achieve. I've got a section for helping me to name an offer. I've got a sales assets assistant piece, which oops, pieces are open where I can do sales pages, email sequences, webinars, five day challenges to lead up to selling the product. Um, it will come up with just general sales tactics for me for uh, different ideas and also content ideas, which is a major one. So in this example, I'll show you a couple of examples. We won't go through this all or we'll be here all day. So I'll show you the pricing one first. And we have three options here to come up with pricing. So I deleted the price earlier. So if I show you price suggestion based on value alone, it will generate what it thinks this product, my Notion course templates are worth, just taking into account the transformation and who my ideal customer is. And it's saying between 30 and $50. If I wanted to make this a no brainer offer that people absolutely wanted to buy, I would click this button and see what it suggests in this instance. So it's suggesting between 19 and $29. And then if I wanted to make it my main revenue generator, it would possibly suggest a bit more. Yeah, 39 to 59. So it's similar to what it's valued at. So um, depending on what your strategy is, um, you're gonna use different buttons here and what the purpose of your offer is. So I'm just going to delete these. Um, but I always like to do the value one first just to see what it thinks the product's worth before I start thinking about my strategy because I just find it interesting. So mine is $11, so it should definitely be a no-brainer. Uh, so I can pop my price in here. So you don't have to listen to it, but it just gives you a bit of guidance. So um, that's the pricing panel. If we take a look if we go back to the sales asset assistant and go down to content coworker, so this is for creating content that specifically educates people on your offer. And this could be, so the way I tend to do it is I use this for long form content and then I will break it down then for my short form content. But you could do it directly to short form content. There are no rules in how you use this. So I have generated already, as you can see, 
Um, by clicking the button, I've generated 20 long form content ideas specifically for this piece of uh, this product. So if I just pick one of these, simplifying course creation, a step by step guide to using Notion, that'll do for now. So if I copy that, down here I've uh, input into my template a view of my primary content uh, calendar. So I can directly in here paste my content ideas and then work on them further from my content hub. So I can just click this, I can paste the idea, which has been generated by AI. And then if I go back to the home page, let's say I'm working on content today. If I go into my long form content hub, you can see in amongst my two actual YouTube videos, we've got my example one here ready for me to work on. And I have different tools within this database <laughs> for you to work on SEO, curiosity, creating a content outline, and then breaking down that long form piece of content into short form content. And again, if I just show you LinkedIn for a, as an example, this will generate uh, LinkedIn post ideas based on your long form content idea. And I've got a link in exactly the same way to my short form calendar where I can directly input the ideas into my content calendar when I generate them from within here. So it all works one from one to the other, and then you can easily find things when you need them. So that in a nutshell is why I absolutely love using Notion combined with AI, because the AI can be built into your workflows, can be templated, so it's almost like a standard operating procedure, and it just, saves so much time. If you want to use this system for yourself, I'll leave a link for you to find more information in the description.